I now call to order the New Pearl City Council meeting, October 15th, 2018, at 7 p.m. Mrs. Burner. Mayor Reynolds. Here. Mr. Chami. Here. Mr. Lowry. Here. Mr. Hall. Here. Mr. Cook. Here. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Here. Six, five members present. Six members present. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Mr. Lindsay will be giving our invocation. <laughs> Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you once again for allowing us to assemble to do the city's business, Father. Give us the wisdom to negotiate these contracts we have coming up, Father. Father, we ask you to keep an eye out for our firefighters and our police officers and this, every citizen in this town. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We do our pledge to fly. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Action on the minutes for 10-1-18. So moved. Second. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Sustained. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. And it's accepted by zero. Are there any communications tonight? There are none. City Manager report, Mr. Bridge. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council. I'd like to share with you the city manager's report. Uh, before we get started I, uh, started, I would like to uh, speak on behalf of Ms. Watson. Uh, I've excused her from a few council meetings uh, for our software upgrade we're doing. And then this week, she is actually out of town at her son's wedding. So uh, she does uh, want to come. Uh, she will be starting to come at the next Mount council meeting. We just had a lot going on. So with that being said, I'll start off with a finance report. Uh, September total revenue, $301,473.98. September total expenses, $338,694.98. Our year-to-date revenue collected, $4,909,500.83. And our year-to-date expenses, $3,786,646.61. Uh, Council, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to entertain them. Council? And moving on to the city manager report, our service discussion with our service director, Mr. Howard Kitko. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Good evening, Mayor, members of council, members of the public. Uh, I'll start off in our service departments. Uh, we are street crews are currently preparing for leaf collection and <coughs> snow removal. Uh, we are have finished up our th uh, first three phases of our hydro flushing, and I think uh, that we might get finished maybe by the end of this week. Well, Hopefully, get flushing yeah. by the end of next week. Probably by the end of next week, we'll have the hydro flushing uh, completed throughout the city. And I still have not had one complaint with any kind of rusty water or anything like that. So uh, the crews have done a great job of keeping our mains um, clean. Uh, we'll be starting some street repairs caused by trash truck traffic in various areas of the city. Um, after I had uh, completed this report for Mr. Bridge, we'd already done some repairs. Uh, permanent and then we've also got a couple temporary repairs to get us through the winter till we can do a more um, permanent fix in the spring some are going to take some curb and gutter removal from the trash trucks uh, in particular like there on Church Street across from the city building um, it went almost like 12 inches deep along the curb so we don't have time this fall to completely remove three or four sections of that curb and gutter and do a full build up of that road area so we will get those in the spring but we did temporarily fill it in and uh, get some dura patch um, you'll, you'll start seeing that the various road projects, uh, I talked with the county this morning, they are extremely behind on the county and also like with the New Carlisle Pike project, that OPWC project, which is not New Carlisle, but it is the county, um, they are behind too, they're a contractor, so uh, everybody's behind. And hopefully by the end of this week, they will be getting some postings out there for no parking. But I have, as people call it, I told them, I said, the project will start once we get no parking signs. So, because we've already backed this up like two, three, four weeks yeah. as it is. So, um, and then uh, we still are waiting for the approval for our CDBG funds. That should be coming soon. 
and I just finished up on, it was supposed to be today, but it should be tomorrow on getting my last amount of uh, financing numbers. And I got a draft budget, draft <coughs> ordinance, a ordinance drafted uh, that we're reviewing right now to bring to council for procedures for this uh, wastewater project, i.e. to go through engineering, um, acceptance of bids, and things where Randy might be able to run this project and help us out with uh, taking the timeline down and not extending, like bringing each and every phase of the project to council if uh, we can draft this budget right to, or draft this ordinance right to be able to proceed with this project, you know, a little quicker. Um, but that'll be coming soon. And uh, we have had seven properties on the traffic signal upgrade project. We have seven properties that we need temporary or permanent right of way. Um, so far we have gotten two and we will be getting our third one. That part of that project's about done and it's still scheduled for spring of 2020. And that is all I have in the report. I can entertain any questions outside of the report also. Council. Mr. Chair. Wow. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Kickhill, on the, um, the curbs on Main Street that I've talked about before, can they be temporary or like a, like a temporary fix as far as instead of doing the whole piece that's down under the, back, the blacktop, could you remove the, the part that's the actual curb that everyone sees, rebar it, and then recap it as a temporary fix? It is definitely not preferred by any means um, because usually what happens, water will get up underneath there and spall that curb back off at okay. uh, rebar. It will hold for some time, but it's just not gonna have the strength that it did if people were, you know, people bump curbs all the time while they're parking. Right. Even with that rebar in there, there is a potential of uh, breaking. Okay. Especially if they're using sack concrete. You know, it's not one whole structure anymore. Right, okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Mr. Cobb. Mr. Kick, uh, we threw dirt patch in the streets. I think we have a little bit of dirt patch material left, but I think we're just about done with the dirt patcher uh, for the season. Is there some that um, that I'm aware of that need to to uh, get you, hit? You've got Washington over here. You've got some on Henry. You got some over on Langdale. Okay, I'll check on those. Good, Mr. Cobb. Are you good? Yeah. Got yeah. something else? Yep. Thank you so much. Mr. Thank you, Mr. Kiko. And moving on with the city manager to report our fire discussion <clears throat> with our fire administrator, uh, Chief Trustee. Mayor, Council, and Public. For the month of September, the New Carlisle Fire Division responded to 96 EMS calls in the city or in Elizabeth Township. The division responded to five or excuse me, 15 fire related calls in the city and zero in Elizabeth Township. Right now our run number, last number, run number is at 1,065. We had four EMS calls answered mutual aid uh, by either Pike Township or Public Park due to Medic 52 being on response. We answered one mutual aid uh, EMS call for Pike Township and three for Bethel Park. In the month of September, the division responded to two overdose calls. The fire division did receive a grant from the Workman's Comp Group for the amount of 14989 This grant is for new fire gloves and hoods for the firefighters. It's under their cancer uh, deterrent program. The hoods are, can't to, they have a barrier in them for cancer causing agents, and same way with the gloves. Uh, but this will allow us to put uh, every firefighter with two hoods and uh, one to two pairs of gloves for each firefighter for swap out pur purposes. Council. Anything? Mr. Robert. Chief, I just want to thank you for the uh, obviously report. But thank you for the uh, open house and fire administration that the department put on Saturday. It was a really nice event. Enjoyed it a lot. So thank you for that. Anything else, Council? Thank you, Chief, for the update. Mr. Bridge. And moving on, uh, thank you, uh, Chief Trustee. Moving on with the city manager's report, our police discussion with Sergeant Underwood. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, Mayor, Council. Of course, the audience, we appreciate you being here. I will try to speak a little louder, is that better? Okay. <laughs> While on patrol, oh, well, I better start at the top here. This is our September report. In uh, September, New Carlisle deputies were dispatched to 45 calls. Uh, assaults, we had none. Domestic violence, we had five. 
theft we had one, non-injury crashes three, injury crashes uh, our department didn't handle any. Citations 12, drug complaint one, overdose we had two, suicide attempted was one, and burglary or B&E we had none. And this is interesting, uh, we dug into this quite, quite a bit after the last council meeting and we're still continue to patrol for what I'm about to mention. While on patrol, Deputy Moody located three subjects, Doug Sowers, Sowers, Steve Bird, and Leslie McConaughey, who were in the park behind uh, the post office on September 16, 2018. We believe these are the subjects going to the parks after hours. So please contact us, uh, the Clark County Sheriff's Office at 937-328. 2560 is to see them, or if there is an issue, you can always call 911 on that. Um, uh, we know where they're staying, but they're not breaking the law where they're staying. And uh, it's kind of, it is causing a problem. Um, sooner or later, we'll find something hopefully to arrest them. They had no warrants on them, uh, so I'll, we do know we have some people in the parks now. Uh, the first month, the first of this month, Deputy Cesar Gonzalez attended a week-long police officer bicycle training at Dayton Metro Police uh, Parks Department. And that's who you saw out on the bicycle during the Heritage. Uh, he graduated Saturday and was on the bike, I'm sorry, graduated Friday and was on the bicycle Saturday up here. And we got a lot of good compliments about that. that. That brings us back to two deputies who are certified on bicycle patrol. And the Clark County Sheriff's Department purchased uh, Duke Corral Deputy Joe Liming a new tactical vest. And that was an $825 purchase. And always, please contact the Clark County Sheriff's Department at 937 328 2560 if you witness anything suspicious, and this could be the phone call we need to solve a crime. So if we work together, we can get rid of these people that, that doesn't need to be around. That concludes my report. If we have any questions. Council? Mr. Scott? Sergeant Underwood, on this tactical vest, is the city paying for that, or is that coming out of the county? No, it was purchased by the county. Pardon? It was purchased by the county. Do we have to reimburse the county for that? No, sir. It's purchased by the county. That's it. Okay. We won't have to buy another vest. I believe it's about four years before we have to buy another police vest. Chancellor, anything else? Mrs. Strillen. <clears throat> Sergeant Underwood, uh, I'd like to thank uh, the sheriff and the county department for their services out here. They uh, seem to try to stay on top of things. And I also want to thank the uh, generosity of the department for buying this tax vest for one of our deputies out here. I'll pass that information on. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anything else, <clears throat> Thank you, Sergeant Underwood. Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Sergeant Underwood. And moving on to the manager report under Madison Street School. Uh, attached in your packet is, you'll actually see a quote <clears throat> from Leapy Enterprises, and that's for a, a pre demolition and asbestos inspection, <clears throat> excuse me, at the Madison Street School. This is not asbestos removal. This will be, this would allow the city to have a uh, comprehensive report on <laughs> asbestos is in excuse that me. school prior to us demoing it when it comes to that time. Uh, this is well below my authority to spend. It's coming in, I think, 3600 although I would like council's motion to approve if this is something council wants to go ahead and have done. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Cut. So move. I thought we were still in questions, aren't we? Well, I mean, this is just time for discussion is now. Okay. Mr. Who Mayor. second that? Was it Mr. Shammy? Mr. Shammy. Council, any discussion? Mr. Vice Mayor. Mr. Bridge, have we not done this before? Have uh, 
people come in and look at this over the last few years or not? Uh, the only thing I can find on Madison School is that we have demo quotes, but all the demo quotes does that have anything to do with the asbestos. And if we did have anything on file, which I don't recall, maybe some of the council members or longtime residents will be able to tell us, it's going to be out of date. Okay. All right, thank you. So if I remember correctly, the last time I had someone look at it was 2008. And I think also uh, Kim Jones forwarded it back in like 2011 or 2013 or so. Yeah. So they did have, I'm sorry, they did not have one done? It was just about demolition, not on asbestos. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Since there is asbestos in there. Yeah, we were under the impression that asbestos is gone. I mean, yeah. that's what we were told originally. Yeah. There's still some left. Um, what I have been told, so that this study is going to determine what exactly it is. Good to have some clarity on the issue. Because mm -hmm. if it ever goes to be demoed down, we're going to not. We're going to need to know where the asbestos is, and then what it's going to take to tear it down. Yeah. Something about if it's less than oh lord, one or two percent, and you can treat it in one manner. But if it's more than a certain percentage, then you got to treat each individual asbestos thing as its individual. Yeah case opposed to, all right, we can just count it all as one case, if that makes sense. Counts, any other questions on this? Nope. Mrs. Byrne? Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Pop? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Sheen? Yes. Motion accepted, six zero. Ready, Mr. Brent? All right. Uh, thank you. And moving on, union negotiations still currently underway. Uh, we have executive session tonight with council to go into, but our next meeting uh, with the union is uh, Friday, this Friday, October 19th at 9.30 in the morning. Uh, some good news. We are having a shredded community event, and this will be a partnered with uh, New Carlisle Federal Savings Bank. I'm actually having a meeting with them tomorrow to get over some, to go over some marketing plans. Uh, but I did want to share it with everyone tonight because it, our next council meeting is not till November 5th. So uh, as soon as we're done with that meeting tomorrow, we'll be blasting it all over the city's Facebook page. But I will say that the event is scheduled for uh, November 3rd from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. and it will be at the bank parking lot. What we're meeting tomorrow with is to go over well, how we're going to market it, but also the guidelines. Um, do, we, do we limit it to one box per household? You know, uh, we, we can't have everyone bring all their stuff. We just won't have enough time. So those are some of the things that we'll be uh, determining tomorrow. But I did at least want to share the information with everyone tonight. This is, I think, for the first time the city's ever had one or one in a very long time. It's the first time to my knowledge. Yeah. So we're very excited to bring this to the citizens. Uh, and again, thanks to all. Here is a flight festival and parade. It is awesome PR for this city. I cannot tell you how every year we get phone calls at the city building about how great of an event that was. And if I can just take 30 seconds of talking to Councilman Lowry about this, I, I, I live in South Dayton and there's actually two people from the street I live on that actually skipped with the potato festival to come to Heritage of Flight for the very first time. And they were thoroughly impressed with this city. They will be coming back to visit. And that's the things that you know the Heritage of Flight is good for. Bringing people in that normally would not come to this town and leaving with a great perception of it. So again, thank you so much for that. Festival, <coughs> uh, all, this, all our uh, workers that get into it, all the volunteers, it is a win for everyone involved. So again, thank you. Uh, that is all I have for the city manager's report, so I'd be happy to entertain any questions. Council, any questions for city manager Bridge? Mr. Lowry. Um, finance for the, uh, the shredded, who's, who's covering that? It is a 50-50 cost split. Yep. Do you have a total of it? The total uh, cost, yeah. Like, oh, don't quote me, 700 bucks split by two? Oh, oh it's not. It's not expensive. Okay, great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. <laughs> I say that now, but if it's over a certain tonnage, we're going to get charged more. So no one hold me to that dollar amount. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Mr. Rich. Sure. Thank you, Councilman Cook, for putting this into our budget and talking about it at the budget session. So, mm -hmm. appreciate it. Anything else, Mr. Bridge? Nope, that's all right. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. We're moving on now to comments from members of the public. Please uh, limit comments to five minutes or less and say your name and address. Dale Grimm, 114 South Main Street. I have two things I would like to bring up. First of all, nine o'clock last night, somebody smashed into the back of my van when it was parked in front of the office. 
I got out just in time to see a white conversion van uh, block north on Main Street, going very slowly, and then it slipped down into uh, Jackson Street. So I reported it. Deputies uh, Rachel Allender and Steve Elliott showed up, and Elliott and I started cleaning up the mess, and Deputy Allender was uh, taking pictures and doing everything she needed to do for her report. Then she says, I'm going to go find that van. She called me about 11.45 and she said, I've been racking my brain trying to figure out where I have seen that white conversion van before, but I couldn't, so I just drove around. She found it in the parking lot of Brubaker Apartments. She talked to the owner, the owner admitted, smashing into my van. Whether or not he has insurance remains to be seen, but I think that was excellent work by Deputy Allender, and I wanted to publicly commend her for that. And this gentleman is what community policing is all about. The deputies get to know the community. The community gets to know the deputies. The deputy knows who the problem people are. She knows who owns white conversion vans. And that's, that's working out just great. Secondly, the beginning of the, the city council section on the charter starts out, there shall be seven members of city council. I see only six, and I have not seen any action by this council on following the uh, requirements of the charter that you have seven members. We are rapidly approaching the deadline for a, uh, an election in February. Now, if you read through the charter on the section on the city council, it says council shall, council shall, council shall. The word shall does indicate a requirement. And I'm just dying to know if we're going to follow the requirements of the charter. Thank you, Mr. Graham. You want me to answer that? All right. <laughs> well, we're waiting on legal advice from one, the Board of Elections, and then one, another two from our attorney for the follow back up from the Board of Elections. So it's been a month and a half. Well, Board of Elections works at their own pace and time, and so you'll have to reach out to them if you want to issue a complaint to them about it. Thank you. Any other members of Mr. Lowry? If I may, Dale, on your first comment about uh, community policing, I just want to touch on that because I agree with what you said. And, uh, that's the thing that bothers me so much is we did kind of a high turnover rate. We were lucky because we had Deputy Cruz and Deputy Allard for such a long time, and the community really got to know really <coughs> well. And you know, unfortunately for us, you know, Deputy Cruz left to better herself, and you can't blame her for that. I have a really bad feeling it's not going to be too long before Allender does the same thing. Uh, I don't know what you know kind of control or power the city has as far as our you know negotiate or contract negotiation with the department. If there's any way we could you know keep her from leaving and, and keep a familiar face in town, just like you know with Dale's instance. I mean, it's nothing but a benefit to the to the citizens. So. I don't know if it's something we can look at. I mean, I know they've got their own union contract. You know that right on the head. But it's just wishful thinking, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we were talking about, I was talking to that with her about that last night, and she said she loves it here. Right. She does not want to go back on road patrol. She wants to stay in New Carolina right. because yeah. she loves working here. That's interesting. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Vice <clears throat> To follow up on... Uh, uh, Mr. Lowry, I spoke with uh, Deputy Gonzalez. He likes it here too, and he don't want to go anywhere. He uh, he says uh, he he didn't think he would like it that well, but he absolutely loves working in this town. So I told him I said, well, maybe you can move here now. I don't think it'll happen, but he might. So <clears throat> I think we have two deputies that's going to hang around for a while, as long as. Uh, you know, their spouses allows them. Although Gonzalez, I don't believe, has one, so he's good to go. They <laughs> That's it. Thank you. <clears throat> Council, anything else? I didn't, one last thing. I did meet uh, Deputy Liming's the other night. I didn't get pulled over, full disclosure. Uh, he you was, got pulled over. No, I did not. He was, he was, he, <laughs> no, full disclosure, did not get pulled over. He uh, was walking in the neighborhood that I live in, and uh, he, that someone had reported that someone was knocking on their door late at night, and I had, came in and parked my car and got out and started walking up to my house and I got this nice bright flashlight on me, uh, which kind of frightened me, but <laughs> he's a good guy. I met him, he seems very knowledgeable. I'm looking forward to seeing him in the next few months ahead. Hopefully in the daylight. So, any other comments? 
Hearing none, no committee reports, resolutions, Mrs. Berner. Our first resolution this evening, resolution 18-15R, introduction public hearing and action tonight. A resolution transferring City of New Carlisle funds from PNC Bank and New Carlisle Federal Banks to Security National Bank and closing the accounts in PNC Bank and New Carlisle Federal Banks. Council. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Vice Mayor. I move to accept resolution 18-15R. Uh, exclamation of this resolution. Uh, the city is wishing to <coughs> basically streamline our banking. Uh, we will still continue on uh, doing most of our deposits into Star Ohio with our investment banking. But within security, we'll have our general checking account with also a money market account too. So most of our funds, uh, most of them will be tied up in that investment account. And we'll do, we'll transfer money from our money market account into our security account for our day-to-day -day checks and then payroll and stuff like that. But right now we've got we got accounts everywhere, and it makes it tough when you go to balance at the end of the month. And um, our new finance director uh, wanted to do this when she started, so I took some time, thought about it, looked into it, and the uh, uh, resolutions in front of council tonight. Thank you. I had a quick question about this. Mm -hmm. uh, how much do we know we'll save on fees? Because I know we're getting feed from our multiple places, so it probably should save us money. I, I, you know, we had a brief discussion on that, and I want to say that right off the bat, she's saving at least 200, but don't quote me on those numbers. Um, and then once she gets back, we'll get, a, we'll get a dollar amount for you and send it out to you. Council, any other questions? Oh, Mr. Cook. Hey, I, was, I would assume uh, Nuclear Federal and PNC have been contacted and let know. Has there been any feedback from them? I don't know if she's contacted those banks or not to tell them we're closing the account. I meet that with some optimism. I would have thought that maybe we needed to make some inroads since. The money we have with those two banks are minimal compared to what we have in security. So it's not like we're taking a crap ton of money out of those banks and putting them in security. Okay. Council, any other comments? No. Mrs. Berner. Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. No. Mr. Cook. No. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Motion passes, four to two. <clears throat> Thank you. Then ordinance tonight, we have one Mrs. Burner. We have ordinance 18-26E, introduction, public hearing, and action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract for liability insurance with USI Insurance Services, LLC, representing the public entities pool of Ohio for the administration of said policy and declaring an emergency. Council. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Vice Mayor. I move to accept ordinance 18-26E. Uh, Second. And an explanation of this ordinance, every year we have to get liability insurance for the city uh, to cover our buildings, our cars, <clears throat> whatnot, grounds. Um, we have had a very long-standing relationship with USI Liability, um, and they're the brokers for our public entities pool of Ohio. Uh, last year, we a premium by, by about $16,440. This year, they slashed an additional, I think, um, 14, 15, so $1,415. Last year also too, they locked in our rate for three years. So um, with that being said, I put a, a legislation in front of council tonight to stick with them. They have treated us uh, uh, absolutely astonishing over the course of my tenure here at the city um, and, and uh, further back from when I started. So uh, council has the ordinance tonight in front of them. It is emergency because the policy does start on November 1. Council, any questions, comments? Hearing none. Mrs. Burner. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Motion accepted 6 0. On the business, Mrs. Burner, do you mind reading? Sure. Congressman Warren Davidson will hold his mobile office hours at the city building on the fourth Tuesday of each month from 1.30 p.m. until 2 p.m. 
The intergovernmental <coughs> meeting will take place on Monday, October 29th at 6.30 p.m. at Tecumseh High School. And the Crime Watch meeting will take, pay, take place November 14th, 6.30 p.m. here at Smith Park Shelter House. Thank you. Council, anything for the business? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lowry. Just a couple of things real quick. Um, Mr. Kiko, if you mind, I'd go back to you real quick. I have a question. I didn't know if you could answer this or get it to me by, by chance. On the curbs, is there a way you could equal out? Because concrete is sold by the yard, correct? Yes. How many feet of curb equals the yard? I'd right? have to get the calculator out. <laughs> Sometime, if, if, if you happen to know that number, could you shoot it to me, maybe? It varies on what type of curb. You're talking about Main Street? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Also, um, also on the Heritage Flight Festival, I did, I did want to thank, uh, besides you know the committee that worked so hard for it, uh, Fire Chief, uh, Sergeant Underwood, the city workers, uh, Mr. Kitko, everybody that was, you know, I mean, besides our committee, there's a whole lot of people have a hand in that. And also on the, on the food drive that we did, the mile of food, I don't know how many people have heard, we got a total of uh, 2,800 pounds of food for the, for the food shelter. So that was, that was, we didn't even come close to a mile, but it was still more food than they were ever expecting. So that was really good for them. So thanks to everyone who came out and brought food. Um, and how was that work? How far did it go? It was, it was uh, I don't know, a few yards past the bridge. It was a little under a quarter mile. We had a guy from Tip City come. He had a uh, garage door company. He said he had seen it on Facebook, and he brought out like 300 cans of food from Tip City. So that was really nice of him. So thank you to him. So I had to thank you. I've got something. Uh, I passed around uh, this uh, piece of paper I, I printed off uh, to honor. Okay, let me just back up. I went through Greenville. Uh, about a week ago, and I pulled into their town, and they had these banners. And now, did everybody get a copy of that? I know I passed it down, but. And uh, I think this would be really something if we did something uh, for our town to. Uh, Sarge. For our heroes. Get him more. Honor them, honoring the military. And I think each banner costs about $7, and it has. Dewey. This gives you an example of what it looks like. Dewey. Uh, about seven bucks. Yeah. Don't pull that up. That's, that's, that's what the, uh, I know I was going to bring that up. Uh, that was also on WHIO where in uh, New Lebanon, the uh, DPNL is charging for each poll, I think it was $326 to keep them up on the polls. Now, that's a question I have to ask. We have our own light pole, don't we, that DPL does not know. So, we could probably utilize it that way instead of using the... You know, I mean, we can put things on a telephone pole like that. It goes against our own code. The light, the black light poles or something? Oh, the black light poles or the telephone pole, like the actual... Well, you can't do the telephone pole. I, that's what I heard you say. I'm sorry. Right. That's what they're charging the city for. Just something to think about, though. I mean, uh, can we even put these in there? What, what size are these? Um, or you can have various sizes of these banners. Oh, yeah. I mean, the ones I, the ones I saw in green were pretty good size. They usually do the 18 by 36 or 24 by 36. I think ours are 24 by 24. But if someone get, wants to, I can get you the size. So if this starts rolling, you already know what our banner size needs to be. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that'd be great. So I don't know what you guys think about that, but I think it's a great idea. Uh, <coughs> and, uh, thank you. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, on these banners, uh, Mr. Bridge, maybe you could answer this, or, or Mr. Kiko. <coughs> Would it be possible to hang these on our street lights? That's what he just said. That's what he's talking about. But I thought Mr. Bridge thought it was telephone poles, because he did say that. Well, no. New Lebanon had them on the telephone. Okay. Place, and that's where they're getting fined. Uh, right. So. But could we put these on our... On oh, if they're compatible, yeah, they're ours. Okay. Downtown is what you're talking about, right? Yeah. yeah. I saw them, too, in another city. They look fantastic. Yeah. They look great. Okay. They really Thank do. you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Cobb. <clears throat> you go to West Milton, they've got them on the street lights and poles. The telephone poles. 
They have them all the way down Main Street there. But they use both, utilize both. Don't we have something like how our lights are installed? You can't have a banner and a flag. So if, if we have to put a flag up, you got to take the banner down? Or can you have both? Yes, yeah, so the way our banner arms orientate with the flag holder, you can't really have both at the same time as the flag will cover the banner. So if you get these, we'll just have to strategically place them maybe every other, because we can go flag, banner, flag, banner. There's mm -hmm. various options. Right. They just can't, we just can't have both filled on the pole at once. Sure. Just like when you pull the top, you see that. Oh, that would be great. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Shannon. Council, anything else? We'll need a motion to go into executive session to discuss collective bargaining matters. So moved. Second. This is Second. Mr. Shannon. Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Reynolds. Yes. And Mr. Yeah. We're now going into executive session. We'll have a five minute recess before we go. Mr. Lindsay. Go back into regular session. Is there a second? Okay. Mr. Shannon. The mic will be the first. Okay, uh, this is the vote to go back into regular session. Mr. Councilman Lowry. Yes. Councilman Cobb. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Vex Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Councilman Chandler. Yes. We are now back into a regular session. And Mr. Powers, Mr. Mayor, I make the motion we adjourn. Second. We are adjourned.